if you're in this space making money off of, of black pain, like you, do you really want to see any type of improvement? And if any improvement does happen, are you going to speak to it publicly? Because it's gonna go against essentially what you've been saying that you're fighting against. Hi everybody, welcome to the Do You Know Black Creators Kickback. I'm Melissa. And I'm Darnell, and we're the creators and executive producers of the Do You Know Black Game Show and the Do You Know Black Kickback. In the last episode of the Do You Know Black Kickback, our contestants were asked if public opposition is harmful or helpful to black advancement. This is with respect to the Atlanta Compromise and the clashing ideologies of Booker T. Washington and W.E. Du Bois. So, Darnell, with that, I will kick this one off to you um, to, to let me know your thoughts. Yeah, so so I uh, I have pretty firm thoughts I, I think on on the idea of what anybody shares publicly. I, I think just generally speaking, personally, the way I was raised was I was always raised with people don't need to know your business. <laughs> that's just how, that's just how my mother always raised me, right? Where it was. There are certain things that, you know, you may talk about publicly, but when it comes to family business, you keep family business inside, right? So you don't air out your dirty laundry or whatever that may be. So I think that when, when it comes, or even in sports, right? We see it in, in sports on teams, like they always talk about when, when there are issues within the team, you keep that in the locker room. You don't take that to the stand and start telling the press about it and telling the media about it and then letting the media go and talk about all of like the issues that you're having within your team because then that creates confusion, uh, that creates frustration, and then it just takes the problem and then it, it you, you create a situation where you can have a lot of spectators and instigators to, to whatever issue it is that you're feeling. So I think it's interesting today versus when that happened because historically speaking, there have always been opposing views. A lot of people will always bring up how Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. had completely opposing views. Uh, and, and in this episode, Jameer, he mentioned that from, since the, from the beginning of time, like there, there's always going to be uh, public uh, or, or discourse, but there's always gonna be opposing views to a subject. And Jamil, he, he brought something up that I thought was really interesting too, where he was saying how when, when you are taken from different tribes, ripped from your homes from different tribes, and then you're thrown to a place from jump, like once you come over here, you're already starting from different places just from jump because of the fact that you were taken from different places. So it's not to say that we can't have differences, but we need to be really mindful of how we are communicating our differences and how we're listening to people uh, when they have opposing views to us, especially when, when it's public. So for me, I do wish that I could see or, or we could figure out a way where some of these more controversial topics, we don't think how we can move away from saying, hey, social media is our platform to discuss. Our, our, our deepest, darkest problems and, and conflicts. It's easy to do it on social media. It's easy to do it via media outlets because you get the highest volume of, and the highest reach, but you're also letting a lot of people into that discussion that don't necessarily need to be in on that discussion and they don't necessarily have the best uh, they don't have the best motives behind why they care about that discussion. So, so that's my thought on it today. At that time, I think the conflict becomes when you have, and this is, and I'll hand it off to you here, which is why this is not an easy answer, is if you have somebody who publicly speaks out on behalf of the full group, should you be correcting them publicly as well? It kind of reminds me of growing up, like my mother, when it comes to discipline, if I act out in ShopRite, she gonna discipline me in ShopRite, right? Like she's like, you act out in public, you get disciplined in public. Like, so, so I don't think that public is a safe space to act a certain way. So I do think that maybe there's a component of that that happens within our culture where some people will feel the need to publicly be the voice for everybody without being appointed the voice for everybody so so that's something else to consider but generally speaking i think 
we need to figure out a way to move towards having certain conversations, especially controversial conversations privately. I think to have this conversation, let's step back and just give a little bit of context to the the actual situation here within the, the compromise question, the Atlanta compromise question. So at this point, this was Booker T. Washington hosting a, um, giving a speech in front of an audience of white people, essentially telling them that as the black community, speaking on our behalf, saying that we would be willing to accept um, segregation and we would stop seeking civil rights in exchange for uh, opportunities to help you know, provide economic development. He essentially said that, you know, as a focus, black people will not focus on education, but more on vocation and training um, and economic independence. And in exchange for that with white people's support, in turn, we will um, essentially stop fighting for civil rights. We won't cause a stink and, and, and that'll be that. So, Obviously, I think the issue where that came from and where W.E. Du Bois comes from on his uh, point, the two differences between the men is that obviously Booker G. Washington believes in economic independence and uh, W.E. Du Bois, this is put simply, uh, just to oversimplify this, W.E. Du Bois, his whole opinion is education and civil rights. Like that's the key to equality for black people, not necessarily economic independence or solely economic independence. So they had differences in their views there. And I think the fact that um, Booker T. Washington was speaking on behalf of black people, essentially saying that we can we will concede in exchange for this when obviously, you know, that's not a thing that we all sat down and had a conversation w about at the time, uh, that was a big point of contention for, for many black people. The fact that, you know, this was a sold out audience. If I'm, I'm remembering this correctly, the white people were cheering and, and like they were, they loved the idea. And the fact that you're having this conversation without actually having had this conversation with black people and you're essentially presenting a solution on behalf of black people was, was an issue. So I feel like while I do agree that our public, our laundry doesn't need to be aired out publicly, and I think that it, it's uh, a tool that's been used to, to weaponize, um, it's been a tool to like divide, to divide us. I, I feel like in this situation, I can understand why W.E. Du Bois would come out publicly because just like you were saying before, if you say something publicly, you, some, you, you need a, a counter, uh, a person to counter that publicly so that you don't have other people believing and agreeing like, hey, well, he said it's okay. Like I, I remember when I was in uh, college, uh, somebody that I was I was dating, <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't even believe I said this. He, he gave his friend the right, the okay to say the N word, his friend who was not black. And mind you, my the guy I was dating at the time also did not even use the word. But this guy would go around saying it all the time. I checked him a couple times for saying it. He's like, well, he said it was cool. And he's like, yeah, yeah, chill out. It's fine, it's fine. But like, who are you to tell, to speak on behalf of all of us and tell this dude he could say that? Like, no, you don't represent all black people. Like you're barely, like even yourself, like you're, you're kind of shaky right there. So I, I feel like that's how, in that in that situation yes you deserve to be checked publicly because you're making these statements publicly and somebody needs to publicly check you and let everyone else know hey we don't we don't all agree with this so i i feel like in that situation absolutely he should have um and then i'll, I'll let you kind of jump in after but well we can get back to that yeah the first thing i want to say is i want to congratulate you on a major upgrade in your the Stop. man in your life so first off, congratulations on that one, publicly. Congratulations on the upgrade. So now that that's done, so in any event, but um, I just like making you roll your eyes. So that, that worked for me there. <laughs> but no, so, so in any event, um, no. So, so I think that that's kind of, but the question becomes like there's a cycle. And it's, it's interesting because in another episode, we talk about like, in many episodes, there are certain themes that come up across all of these episodes. One and in this episode actually as well, which we talk about, but one of the themes talks about the idea of like black, we are not a monolith. So across the episodes, we've heard different people say we are not a monolith. 
But then we've also heard people say, but for optimal advancement opportunities, we have to work towards the same thing at the same time to strike with the most force with the resources that we have. So this is like kind of like a conflict. Monolith ver versus independence, right? <laughs> like monolith versus autonomy. So, so this is the theme. The other theme that comes up often is performative. This is the word I feel like that we are all, because we're all realizing now that we are being lied to, we are being manipulated. And for a long time, we've kind of noticed it, but we've just kind of gone along with it. But now more and more black people are kind of like, ah, I'm kind of tired of the show, <laughs> right? So this is kind of where it is. But why do I bring that up? It's, I think it becomes a cycle because no matter what, as long as there's one person, all it takes is one person that feels comfortable speaking out publicly to ruin that process. Because if one person comes out and speaks out publicly, a lot of times if somebody comes out and speaks out publicly about an issue, right? And, and not just an issue or a subject, but attaching a solution to it. So I think that we're very mindful of stating, hey, this is our position. There's opportunities for certain type of discourse. However, it's still very subject based because some of like the nitty gritty conversations we have behind closed doors with a lot of different people with different perspectives. So we're mindful of that. But if you have one person that comes out and says something publicly that without the support of the full, or I'm sorry, <coughs> without the alignment of the full black community, which is rare to have, or at least the majority, now it's like immediately that one person throws off this entire idea of behind closed doors. Now I have to go out and publicly say them. So it, I think it can become like a cycle where all it takes is one person to go rogue. And then now it's like, now, okay, now I have to go and publicly do this. And then another person comes out and says, it, and now I have to go out and do that. And a lot of those in the individuals, right? Like in, I remember, um, you know, my, my fraternity brothers used to be like these GDIs, these, these goddamn individuals, <laughs> like you, like these individuals, the way they, the way they operate. It's like when you go off in, and do these things independently as an individual, now you throw off this whole thing, but there's always gonna be that person that does something individual as an individual. So I don't know how you stop that one rogue person that a lot of times the, the our oppressors could use as a weapon against us. And a lot of times those people, they aren't acting with the, the community in mind when they're in public, they're acting with my personal brand a lot of people they get they get a high off of the idea of being an activist without getting a high off of the the getting a high off of seeing us progress make progress so i, I we do have that as well so i think that that's what becomes hard is that there's always going to be that one person that comes out publicly to say something meaning we're always going to have to come out and say something publicly as well even if we think that we should be private you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. Uh, you touched on a couple of things I'll try to remember to go back to, but I think you know, just like they say as, as, as parents, like if you're a parent and your, your child comes and asks one of them, one of the parents a, a question, can I go do this? And the one parent says yes, and then the other parent, they go to the other parent, the other parent says no. Like ultimately you need to- <laughs> Flip, I think. What? One parent says no, and then they go to the other parent. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I get what you're saying. <laughs> so, you know, when, when people talk about the example of, of two parents, you know, a child going up and asking both parents uh, a question, or can I go do this? And they give two different responses. And, and, and you say, like, as a parent, you need to support what the other parent said, even if you don't agree with it. And then you figure it out behind the scenes. Like, you need to have a united front for the child. It's the same way with our community. Like, despite the fact that somebody might come out and say something publicly, you can't go back and say, hey, no, this, 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 well, this is the conundrum. Like, can you go back and publicly say, like, this person is wrong, you know, we don't agree with this, or do you go back to them behind the scenes and say, hey, yo, brother, like, sister, let me, let me talk to you real quick and try to get them on the same get some sort of alignment with them. I think the issue 
comes with what you were mentioning, where people are acting more for their personal brands without, you know, having alignment or in even an understanding of what other people within our community are um what our views are on this they're going out publicly and saying hey like if cnn is going to give them an interview they're going to tell them what they want to hear they're going to say hey uh, we're going to book you tonight we want you to come talk about this and we want you to speak about how amazing this initiative is or how detrimental this is to to the black community specifically they're going to go in and say what that whatever needs to be said to keep them on there every single night um, uh, reporting on you know how bad things are or how good things are getting they're going to say what they need to say for their brand and i think that what we the challenge with our community has really become is that we can't check other people without us looking crazy because everyone will come back and say hey look like why should i do anything and this is an example, a complicated example, which is a conversation in itself, is the idea of reparations. And if 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 the system really wanted to destroy black people, they could literally say, hey, you know what? We because now we can all agree, regardless of whether we think that reparations will be helpful to the black community or not as black people. I think all black people can agree that, yeah, we should have them like. But I think we all differ in the fact of whether we think it's going to be effective or how it would be used. And I think that, you know, the system, if they really wanted to, to, to mess us up, they would come and say, hey, you know what? We actually agree with you. We'll give you reparations and you have 30 days to figure out what y'all are going to do with it. And like we would go crazy. They would we would literally tear each other apart because we're not on the same page about what it's going to take to elevate our community. So I feel like. Th that same example, I think that, you know, within society or in the system or however you, whoever you want to point to, they understand that we are so divided on these things. So they're essentially letting us have these conversations back and forth like, oh, yeah, if you're you guys, are, you're, you're civil leaders, you're activists, like we don't really have an MLK or a Mar uh, or a, a, a Malcolm X of this of this time. But we do have some prominent, I guess you would say civil rights figures or activists um, who do really have their own strong brands, who have had public disagreements and they're, and, and people have pointed that and said, pointed to that and been like, look, they, they're tearing each other down right now. They don't even like each other. Why should we trust either one of them with what they're saying that you guys need if they can't even get on the same page? So I just feel like we're, we're in a, revolving you know situation with that yeah i think that when it comes to the the pub and i didn't even think we were going to get into this specific conversation but uh we we both touched on it i touched on it first and you touched on it again this idea of the black individual's brand right like instead of i, I think that as as creators that that are trying to create this thing and we want to see this succeed i i i think that we always make it about the project first, right? Like we always make it about, it's not about me. It's not about you. That's why we, we, we're very open to like, Hey, if we, if we're wrong on something, tell us we're wrong. We, I don't need to be right. Like at all. Like I just need to be better today than I was yesterday. Like who cares? It's all about how do we all make progress together? Like we're all in this, in this game together. So we always really make it hyper about the project that we're working on the show that we're working on the episode that we're working on the future plan it's always about the plan right even what we're doing now it's all everything is part of the plan it's not about my brand or your brand I, who cares right so so there's that but there's a lot of people who are in this activism space right not everybody but there's a lot of people that, that i know personally um and i've seen that are in this space and when you get to a certain amount of notoriety, like a lot of brands will see you as like, hey, you can be the face. You can be the face of a campaign that we're doing. You can be the face of a PR push that we're doing. You can be the face of this thing. And and, and I don't even want to use, I don't like using the word sellout, but because it, it's not necessarily sellout, but like a lot of times that can get into your head. I remember one time I was working I was like heading up, um, I was heading up diversity strategy 
uh, with a large company. And when I was heading up the, not diversity strategy, but diversity recruiting strategy, I don't want to overhype myself, like my title, but um, heading up diversity recruiting strategy at this large company. And uh, I, I knew a lot of people within the company. I had a lot of good relationships within the company and they had a panel that they brought in. And there was a panel of three people, two white, one black. And the black person, I remember he had, um, he had started a very large movement that that had taken off like it was huge it was national everybody was talking about it very public figure um and and i remember like i was in the back getting coffee i was like okay cool that's what's up you know like i'm probably the only black person outside of you in this room at the moment even you know whatever so i remember like like this person was on the panel and they were talking they were engaging like everybody was like really feeling what they were saying i'm like okay cool do your thing black man i see you so afterwards i'm getting coffee he's this person's getting coffee and I go and I'm like, hey, I was like, hey, what's going on, right? Because, it, and that's just my nature. It doesn't matter who you are. Like people know I'm just, I'm just a high guy. Hey, how you doing? How's your day? Whatever. So I go up to him. I'm like, hey, hey, what's going on, brother? That was, that was good. And then he looked at me like I had 10 heads as if it was like, why are you talking to me? It was the weirdest thing. I had never had that experience before because it's not, I'm not like a scrub. Like I, like I had a, a significant amount of strategy here and I'm just trying to talk to you and say, hey, in my mind, whenever I go into these spaces and then like, you know, black people come up to me, I'm like, hey, what's going on? I know that you must be doing something. You're trying like we're both trying like go, go ahead, do your thing. But he looked at me like I was crazy for even trying to talk to him. And I'll never forget that because in my mind, I'm like, you're in this panel and everybody's feeling what you're saying. And then I started to think to myself, I'm like, you're you're really getting a high off of off of that but the relationship between us right now and it's not i i don't have to like e even white people would never just look at me like that right if i tried to say something to them so the fact that you were looking at me like that that was kind of strange to me but that made me realize that and i'm not saying that was the case with this person it's possible that they could have been having a bad day or they were frustrated about something that happened so i can understand that too no, but I think that because you've told me this story before, and I think it's important to mention that you, you said he was behind this really big initiative. I think it's important to mention that this initiative was focused on, was it black men? Uh, black well, I don't, I don't want to say exactly what you don't the, have to say what the initiative, initiative was, I is, but I think the, I think it is important to note that the reason why that was so jarring was because this person was literally wrote a book and is making money off of an idea uh, uh, around supporting black black people black people and then like can't even have that conversation separately with another black person so i think it just speaks to the sincerity of like what are you trying to do here if you really care about but like this your whole initiative you're having a, a conversation in a room full of non-black people about everything you're doing for black people but even in that same room not even an hour after you 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 have some sense of like like disconnect from another black person which which just goes to speak like to the idea of people who are kind of profiting off of other black people who are profiting off of of the idea of of black they, they, they speak to this all the time and i'm not going to get it too deep into it but the idea of like the other black people who are profiting off of black trauma and pain and and things like that like do you have a job like would a firefighter have a job if there's no fires no so if you're if you're in this space making money off of, of black pain like you do you really want to see any type of improvement and if any improvement does happen are you going to speak to it publicly because it's going to go against essentially what you've been saying that you're fighting against so i think it's like a, a losing battle um to an extent uh, because regardless of how much progress we make we're we're never going to get fully there especially if it's the, when you think about who's behind it and who's profiting off of it you're you're taking that business away yeah and that so so i think that and this ties into even though it doesn't seem like it does but this ties into the idea of of public opposition because i think that a lot of the move makers the people that are you 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 do need there's a question about leadership right like who are our leaders as as a black community so so that's another question altogether right like who are our leaders 
which I think a lot of people would have a hard time answering that question. So, so there's that. Um, but I think that when you do have this mixture of people who have this passion to, uh, to do the work, ah, you know what, let, let, I'll, use, I'll use a minor example and it may be bad because I'm just thinking of it right now. But uh, there, there's the movie Don't Look Up with Leonardo DiCaprio and um, right. The, you love bringing up anything with Leo DiCaprio. I mean, listen, okay, I know, no, I know no, we I are, it. I'm not going to get into, I'm not going to hype the man up on, do you know, black, but you know, the man's a beast, <laughs> but in any event, so, but in, in, in the movie, don't look up, he was a leader in this movement of like this, this situation that was basically talking about like the global warming essentially right like and and our negative impact on the planet like that he was all in on that and he was just a brilliant mind in this space and then he started to get a few interviews right he started to get a few interviews and the next thing you know all of a sudden now like he's getting a few interviews and now he's cheating on his wife now he's forgetting where he came from. He still cares about this initiative, right? He still cares about like global warming and the fact that like there's this, well, global warming, but like there's this asteroid that's about to hit the planet. So he's, he's still that guy, but he's also become another guy too. And sometimes I wonder when people start to, because there came a point when he's going on these shows and then he's speaking out and like he he's kind of like, oh man, you know, like just... He, he, he's getting to that that point where he's just really feeling himself and I think that that that's like really symbolic because you have this situation where you have a lot of black people who will get notoriety because of their impact or because of their activism and because of the message or the thing that they're attaching themselves to but then you kind of start to forget what it's like to be a foot soldier to be on the ground and it's not saying that you forget where you came from per se but it's kind of like you, you have to make sure that you don't get too caught up into things that don't necessarily matter and i think sometimes public opposition when people are posting regularly about a certain type of position and um we're gonna i want us to talk about this too and engaging in this this new form of media which is not about informing but a lot of media now is debate culture because debate and polarizing views get more clicks you see it in sports media everything is a debate show now Everything is, do you agree? Everything is debate. It's not conversation. It's not discourse. It's debate culture. So you have people who are getting so caught up in debate culture that now you start to realize like, yo, you're, you're debating and arguing with somebody that's working towards the same thing as you. And, and, and you get caught up in that. And then you start to forget like, why are you here? What's your purpose? What's your calling? So this is my question about like, when I don't even think it's possible to be public without sometimes falling into that debate culture. <laughs>